Welcome to episode 56 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and today we're going to talk about the branding legend you never knew about, and we're also going to talk about why delivering on the customer promise is so important. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. Okay, today is a day that I've been waiting for for a long, well, I'll say a long time, what's really a long time, but I've been trying to get this guy on the podcast for a few months now and schedules never met up and it never worked, but today we made it happen. He's kind of an internet celebrity, especially if you are in a Dallas area, especially if you bought a car because he's done a very, very clever thing. And I think when you meet him, he's a super humble guy, unintentionally created this brand. Now it's very intentional, but in the beginning it was unintentional. He branded himself in an age where personal branding and relationship matter a lot in sales and trust and honesty. And his name is Bowtie Terrence, and we're gonna show you a little bit of this. Hey man, they thought I was playing, man, but I'm done. I'm Bowtie Terrence, I make car deals, uh. Japan on a wheel, but it don't fit the bill, Why? come by car, uh. you might get a steal, yep. I'm really on fire man, this is not as real, Ooh. sick with the pen, Ooh. flowing like I'm ill, Ow. killing everybody and, and the reason, a little bit of that, uh. sauce top shelf, these others no frills, uh. works, is because real. people want to do business with rent. another I'm person, so we go into that a little bit, and I'll say it now, I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it a thousand more, brand is not a logo or a color scheme or a clever name. Brand is really the feeling people get when they interact with you. It's the feeling people get when they buy, when they sell, when they communicate online, when they see a billboard, when they see an advertising, when there's an interaction on social media. It's the feeling that makes them connect with you because we live in a very human environment now. I guess it's always been human. That's kind of weird to say. We've always been humans. We will always be humans. But when I say we live in a human sales environment, I mean that people want to do business with people. They don't want to do business with a company or a corporation. We want a one-to-one -one relationship as close as possible. And that is really what Terrence has done an amazing job of doing in an environment of car sales where there's just some natural lack of trust built in. And we're going to talk to him a little bit about why he did it and what's working, what's not. And... Um, I think you'll know when you see the meeting, you've just seen some of it. People just want to know that you're doing business with a person. And when you're doing business with a person, there's a level of accountability. Being willing to put yourself out there on social media and open yourself up to the criticism or the reviews or the feedback publicly give you a level of credibility. Why? Because it's crowd uh, the crowd is able to police it. It's crowd policed, which is the same reason why we're willing to build things off, off buy things off Amazon off of reviews. Why? Because if enough people review it, then we kind of get a feeling of trust. And so we talked to Terrence about that. And uh, I hope you're going to enjoy the interview. I know you will. He's such a cool guy. He just really is. We talked a little before and after. Also, connect with him on social. We'll link it up behind uh, beneath this. The second thing I want to talk about before we get into the interview is the fact that if you're going to make a brand promise, if you are going to promise this experience, then you better deliver on it. Because if you make all these promises in front and then you don't deliver on the back, we talk about it in the interview and uh, I actually won't say Terrence's uh, response. Let's get into the interview. We'll pick up this conversation on the other side. Here's my interview with Bowtie Terrence. The people on Instagram, why don't you give like, you know, a good 30 seconds, like where you came from and, and what you're up to? Uh -huh. <laughs> this, I know. So it's the toughest part for me because I don't like talking about me. From Atlanta, um, you know, born and raised, played college football at the University of Minnesota. Oh, no. um, been in Dallas for about four years, been selling cars a little over three years. And a phone ring. That's a, he's selling cars, man. And if you, if you don't know the reason, the reason that he's on the show, so he's got this whole career. We'll 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 talk about you for you. So um, I think a lot of people didn't start in the car business. Um, they just found the car business as a good way to uh, have a career working with people. The really unique thing is that you see he's got a hat on. It says bow tie. He's branded himself. 
in a world that is largely defined by manufacturer brands, Ford and Dodge and BMW and Mercedes, right? That's the brand. And one of the things I talk about, about quite a bit is that like, that's just the product you sell, right? That is not actually a dealership's brand. And Terrence has taken that to another level saying like, I want a personal brand within my dealership brand within the automotive industry and kind of the fun things. And we're going to play some clips so you'll see it. But he started making rap videos, rapping about what it's like in the car business. And uh, it's a ton of fun. And so I guess for the really first question, it's just like, when did, why did you decide to make that first video? Oh uh, man, I'll tell you, man, my first video, well, the first rap started, well, uh, when it started long before, when I first got in the car business, I got in the car business because I come from selling life insurance. And I thought I could, you know, just go get a job in finance in the car business. And they told me I had to sell cars first. Uh, so I, you know, I, I don't have any interest about selling cars. I don't like cars. Um, I'm not a big car enthusiast. Yeah. No, me neither. That's funny. Like I said, we never started out yeah. saying we were going to be in the car business. Yeah, I just said, okay, you know, I'll do what I got to do to get into finance. And then... Um, Shoot, I was I would make videos at the time because you know I got a degree in marketing, mm -hmm. well business and marketing. So I would use, I would just take videos of the cars and I would use uh, songs that I heard all the time on the radio. And stuff that was popping at the time, right? Right, and I was I was just over over lay that song with my videos, and then shoot, one day I was just we was just having fun. I was in here freestyling, and then. Uh, my brother, I got a bro my my youngest brother a job with me, and he's a, actually he raps, you know, in Atlanta, and uh, we was like really freestyling, and then we was recording it, and I was like, man, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so I just say, you know what? Let me see if I can make a, make a song to to a beat, and I made one, and it sounded pretty good. And then uh, I don't know, I just say, you know what? Let me see if I can make a video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me, yeah, tell me, what was the first hook? Like the first video you made, what was the hook? Oh, the first what well, uh the first song I made was uh bowtieterrence.com. That's my app. Catch me at the dealership. Ooh, that's my trap. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And so you released that on what? Social media? Yeah, so I put that um I actually put that song. I didn't do a video. I never did a video for okay. that song. I, I put that song on uh, I uh, found out how to like put your music on a uh, the streaming yep, sites. Yep, like SoundCloud, stuff like that. Yeah. Music, put it on everywhere. And then uh, I never I never purchased that beat, though, so I had to take uh, it down. <laughs> I think every new artist has been in that position. <laughs> it was like the gem, but then you had to take out the beat. It wasn't anything. <laughs> so then I did a video. It was uh, right here at the dealership. We got a couple guys together. And then uh, my guy, Gio, hopefully I can get him down here, man, because he, he actually up. does all my videos. <laughs> One of my coworkers <laughs> with my iPhone, I did it all with my iPhone, and um, we were using a Triller app. And then, uh, shoot, I don't know, he was just playing around. I was like, man, that sounds pretty good. Terrence has made a career now out of connecting with people, and one of the elements he's done that by is by creating this personal brand. Like, were you bow tie Terrence before you started creating content? No, I, I was uh, my second day at the dealership. Mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to wear bow ties at work. Okay. Because of, Why? Because we got like over 30 salespeople here and I know how my, how easy it is to forget people's names. Yep. And, and Terrence is one of those names that's easy, easy to forget. Right, bow tie Terrence. That's not bow easy. Bow tie Terrence. Uh-uh. Like I know the guy with the bow tie. Even if they don't remember your name. The guy with the bow tie. So you yeah. started branding yourself as bow tie Terrence just because you wanted a differentiator. Right? And Well, I didn't... I didn't. I had no intention on branding myself. I you just, just did to it, be but remembered. that's instinctual. Like you did in that moment, right? I always say that brand isn't like a defined message. Brand is the feeling that people get when they think about you or interact with you in some way. And by putting on a bow tie, all of a sudden people get a different feeling when they interact with you. I think when you just talk to somebody and they have a bow tie, you automatically think like, all right, I can talk to this guy. He's not pretentious. You know what I mean? It's not threatening. It's kind of welcoming. And so- yeah. What was the first time that somebody came in from seeing some of your content and was just like, hey, I saw you on the internet. Like, I want to talk to Terrence. I want to talk to the guy with the bow tie. When was the first time that happened? Man, you know what? So because my uh, like people don't really come in, they, if they see me on, online, they'll 
they'll uh, reach out to the to me the, the DM or they'll call yep. or text first. They don't really just show up. The people that are who just show up don't ask for me, and I see it all the time. They, hey man, you the rapper guy? Like, did you working with somebody else? <laughs> like you smart. <laughs> One of the things I talk about, right? I talk tell dealers that you absolutely need to start branding your store. Get, a, right. get away from your manufacturer relationship and relying on that to build your brand because your brand is something specific. It's the experience people get. It's the feeling they get when they interact with you. You need to start telling them about who you are. And I've been in rooms before Ooh. where I've pulled you up as an example. And I was like, look, this guy gets it. He's branded himself. And you think people are coming to ask for him? Absolutely. Well, maybe DMing you, right? So it's a lead, well, lead they, generator. Yeah, they call, oh, they call. Like people call I, in majority of my of my calls come from out of the state. Right, because... I mean, I want to come by a car, I want to come by a car. Like, you and know. Why, why do they call? That's an interesting point. Like, why do you think they come... So you're the internet sales manager, right? Or that's what it says on your LinkedIn, right? So you right. have a team that you're in charge of. But why do you think people are willing to come, like, from out of state and far away and call you specifically? They've never met you, right? They right. saw a video, and why, why do they want to buy a car from you? Well, just me, pers- I have these for lack of a better term, philosophies mm-hmm. that I just live by in life, you know, I just transition to the car business. But I think people like to do business with people who feel welcoming, or they want, they like to do business with people who they see as successful, or, you know, they like to do peace, business with people who are approaching business the way that they want business to be done. Yep. So, and how do they know about that though? How do they know about the philosophies? Uh, no, they don't know about it. I just think that's just how people are. They're just uh, like human nature to just want to do business with people who um, are approaching their business, you know, in a, in a way that's welcoming or comfortable or relatable to them. And you think that they initially know that because they see some of your content? Well, yeah, yeah. It's that, oh, 100% is because of the content. It's just, you know, um, I think like there's a lot that goes into my thought when I put songs together, like even down to the lyrics, mm-hmm. to the certain elements of the video that I, people, I feel like they would relate to. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, and, that, and it all comes down to content. You know, the more people who, I, I, I can't remember where I heard it, but I heard uh, this, it was, uh, it was a quote that said, it's, it's not, there's a lot of people who say it's not what you know, it's who you mm-hmm. know. And, but he said, I, I, I'm gonna go a step further and say it's not who you know, but it's about who knows you. Mm. So I heard that. Uh, that's when I start coming up with these videos. I say, you know, I live in Dallas. I don't know a lot of people, but uh, it is my responsibility to know that people, to make people know me. So that's why I started in the video. So people, people know who I right, am. Right, because they made, they made some level of connection, right? Because in a day and age when we talk about honesty and transparency and openness, you've been willing to put yourself out there and be like, hey, this is who I am, through music, through your lyrics, through your willingness to be you know, silly on camera sometimes and, and just have fun, like while you're selling a car, which I think naturally people are always a little tense about, right? It's a big purchase. Right. They might feel like they're gonna get taken advantage of and now all of a sudden you have become a salesman, you've become a person, right? Right, that's what I am, a person who, and I just, even my, my whole sales process is just, People don't feel high pressure, you know what I mean? Now, I'm I'm very skilled salesperson, yeah. you know what I mean? You get the job well, use, done, right? You can make it work for them and get them bought. I get yeah. the job done, but now, you know, there's no pressure there. I get people all the time who I'm not buying today, and they buy today, yep. but they don't feel pressure, yep. you know? So I just take that as me just being relatable, and I just have conversations that just uh, um, low pressure. I'm not a salesperson. I'm a, I'm a person... I just, Happen to have deals. I, I, yeah, no, it's, it, they're connected. <laughs> they're connected. And all right, so two things I want to talk about. Number one, so I tell dealers all the time, I bring you up as an example, and I tell dealers like, hey, you need to have some identifying characteristics of your store and your brand because it's only a matter of time before somebody like Terrence, right, will begin to make his own content, right? He's not going to wait for you to do it. And then there's a lot of, there's a lot of brand loyalty that you own, right? Like, your the bow tie, your person, your name, like people become loyal to you, which is a huge benefit as a salesperson, right? Because you become the guy that can sell. And if if Dallas Dodge or wherever else it is that you happen to work doesn't fulfill the other end of that promise, right? People are going to follow you. They're not going to be loyal to a store. And so brand brand equity has so much more to do today in the connection economy than it ever has before. 
Because even if someone can get it cheaper somewhere else and they have a brand connection with you, they're going to come see you. Why? Because they know you're going to, you're not going to take advantage of them. And with the other guys, even if it's cheaper, they'll never really know if they got the right deal. They'll never really know if they're going to be taken care of after they buy it. Right. But when it's you and you've put yourself out there and you're available and anyone that goes on social, right, opens themselves up to public opinion. They open themselves up to this public level of scrutiny that I think by nature holds itself accountable. People expect one level of experience when they DM you, they see your content, they think they know what you're about. How important is it to follow through with that? Like, how important is it to follow through? Like, what's the back end of that experience look like? They see you, they connect, they come in, they want to buy from you. What's the other side of that coin? Well, so it's a lot of responsibility because, um, like you said, you've already, like the reputation precedes you, the reputation you get them to, to reach out, but then you have to uh, follow up. You know, you have to not, not drop the ball, so to speak. Um, and then it's, it gets kind of tough when you're trying to manage the, the traffic that the dealership's providing mm -hmm. as well as the, the traffic that you provide yourself. You know, it's a lot to juggle. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, main, I mean, ultimately, customer experience is, is if you have a um, values of creating and providing a quality customer experience, then I get it done. That's it, right. In your mind, like if you were to say, look, if you promise this and deliver something that's less, like what happens in a customer's mind? Not you personally, but just what the customer's yeah. psyche. What is what what happens in a customer's well, I head? Think, I think uh, in the customer head, like you, you lie at first. Yeah. Are you the whole you lie? Are you bait and switch? Yep. Um, it's almost like I knew it. Like, it's like I knew it in the car business, especially car sales. I yeah, knew it definitely. Oh my. God, Cup, a couple of stigmas there. <laughs> yeah. I think that I think that custom or brands, right? Whether it's a personal brand like yourself or a dealership brand or any industry, any company, retail brand, especially that spends time, energy, and money building up this message and building up this brand promise, right? And you see people like they'll get in a room and they're like, "This is our brand promise," and if they do all that mm -hmm. work and then start telling, promising people that. And then mm -hmm. they can't fulfill on the back end. Oh, it's so much worse. And also, to to your point, you you'll receive more reviews if you if you drop oh, the ball. Like you receive, day. it's a lot easier to get negative all reviews day. than it is positive. I hate that, but it's just so true. They say if you have a bad experience, you'll tell ten people, but if you have yeah. a good experience, you might tell one. Over the next in the we'll talk, talking about car business. What do you think? You, what advice would you give? To dealers that are kind of looking for a way to differentiate themselves you know i mean a lot of a lot of competition in the market a lot of price competition in the market like what would you say to a dealer's like hey i want to try to like break out ahead and i can't rap um like what should i do what would you tell them well i think everybody i didn't even know i could rap until I started doing it mm -hmm. you know I was saying, if I had known i could rap sooner man i, I would never had to sell cars <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a tough space too <laughs> but I think uh, every, I, don't know, I mean, every, you, you just got to find you know what works for you. Every you know every dealership has a personality. Yeah. You got to right. find what your personality is and put it out there. Um, and rather than you know, like you said, compete against prices. Just you know, everybody has their own. Person. Every general manager has a personality. Yep. Just let that personality. Uh, um, boil over into the store and then you know, just put it Get out, it there. out you there. Know, you, just gotta, you gotta take a chance. Yep. Well, I think I think what I hear you saying is like, you gotta be a person. Gotta don't be a, be a dealership, be a person. Don't be a price. Yeah, don't be a price. Right, because price. if people commit to you and buy from you on price, the second somebody has a better price, they're gone. Like, I mean, you don't want to compete on price because there's only one place for the best price. And that that shifts every day. Right, who's gonna be the lowest price, who's gonna beat this car today, right now, with manufacturer incentive programs, right? That could get crazy. Yeah, yeah. So price isn't and a we, thing. It's be a person, not a price, because people wanna do business with people. With people. And the people don't even remember what they paid for their cars. I say, how much did you pay for the car you trade? I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, because as soon as that deal's done, people are happy to walk away from the memory of it. Like, I don't wanna talk about it anymore. Like, I just wanna drive my car and get on with my life. <laughs> Well, th thanks for taking some time with us. 
Um, I'll let you know when this is coming out to the community. Great. If you need to reach out or want to connect with Bowtie Terrence, tell us, tell the people, what's the best way to connect with you on social media? What platform do you just deliver on? Man, I'm trying to get my YouTube going. Yep. Um, but what other platforms? Instagram, Instagrams? Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Okay. With Bowtie Terrence. We'll link them all up below, but there you go. You got Bowtie Terrence. It's like you can't mess yeah. it up. Hook up with him. He's a good guy. I've been following him for a long time. Finally got to talk with him. And hey, when I'm in Atlanta, I'm going to swing in. Well, I'm in Dallas now. I'm in Dallas. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get That's right. You're Dallas yeah. Dodge. When I'm, I was just in Dallas, but I just passed through the airport on my way to a conference in Amarillo. So I, I will. I will. And despite the fact that you're in Dallas, just want for the record, you're not a Cowboys fan. I always talk about not being an Eagles fan. I usually got an Eagles hat right here. So I haven't compromised oh. my morals, everybody. You know what? <laughs> I've, I've been, I've been, now that I've been in Dallas, I've, be, I've became more connected with my Falcons. That's a, a, that, uh, that's right. It'll do that to you. The closer you yeah. get. Now, we love <laughs> we love our Cowboys fans, but just not uh, in a personal sense, more of in a business sense. So thanks again, man. Have a good day. Uh, happy selling and uh, crush March, man. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Talk Paul. to you soon. So there you have it. I mean, what a chill guy, right? What an honest, authentic dude. Hardworking. And like, let's be honest, like, even though the songs, he shoots them all on his phone, but he puts a lot of time in the lyrics. And, and when you get a little bit of this rhythm, and they start getting this going on. It's hard not to just like him. It really is. So to what he said, to continue the conversation that I started before we went into the interview, if you make a brand promise and there's a lot of time and attention that people put into the brand promise and they get in a room and they write it all down and they, yeah, this is what we want our brand promise to be. But if you can't deliver to that brand promise, you might as well have not even done the work because it's actually worse to have a brand promise you can't deliver on. We use the example in the interview where we said like, look, when you go out to a restaurant, if you have a bad experience, you're gonna tell 10 people of how bad it was. If you have a good experience, you're probably not going to tell anybody because you expected a good experience. Now, if you have an amazing experience, you're probably going to tell 10 people about that. So there's this huge spread between telling 10 people for a bad reason and telling people 10 people for a good reason and setting the tone for that with your brand promise and being able to fulfill that, not just deliver, but over deliver, right? Ancient, it's not ancient business wisdom, but it is tried and true, time-tested business wisdom not just business, but actually in anything, in a personal relationship even, in schooling, in being a boss, in working for somebody else, right? Two things. Under promise, over deliver. Under promise, over deliver. So if you make a brand promise, you are promising something. If you don't deliver on that promise, guess what? You've just gone against your word you have lied, you have betrayed the trust that has been put into you because you made a promise. So I hope that you took away from episode 56 those points. Branding is possible. It's a feeling. It's important. You can do it. You can start today. And then the second point is if you're going to make a brand promise and start to set expectations, you better be able to deliver on them or it's worse than having no brand promise at all. So that's episode 56. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I create a lot of other content on other social platforms. On Instagram, I'm on there pretty frequently. It's kind of a behind the scenes. I post a lot of professional content on LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, you're a professional, please hook up with me there. I would love to connect with you and kind of introduce you to the rest of the, the LinkedIn community. Also post stuff on Facebook and Twitter. Um, we have something in the works and we're gonna be releasing more information about it soon. And it involves a movement and it involves maybe an event. So a lot of stuff coming. Um, can't talk about too much of it now. So I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week. I hope if you found value in this podcast, you will share it with someone you think will also find value so we can grow this community together. Reach out if there's anything I can do for you ever. But you've already given me a gift by listening to this. So I want to do something for you. Let me know what that can be. 56 is in the books. <laughs>